Hi there, this is Jennifer, and I am so glad you've stopped by. So today I have a lot to share with you. First, I am going to give you a peek at a new ink line that has some special features to it. Then I will share with you a way that I found really easy and fun to ink up die cuts so you can get beautiful color. And I'll be using some really cool dies that make layering easy. However, the inking techniques I share could be done with any inks or inking tool you may have with any kind of die cuts. Let's get started by looking at this new line of inks called Fresh Dye Inks from Altenew. I've had these inks for a few weeks and have gotten to play with them, so I'm excited to share with you what I like about them. Now these, right away, you can see are very different because they are round ink pads, and I surprisingly really like that format. I wasn't sure if I would, but it fits in the hand nicely. I also like that the lid screws on so it doesn't fall off. I'm constantly dropping my ink pads and they fall to the ground and the ink lid comes off and my ink pad hits the ground. This is very handy. There are little lines on the side that if you line them up, you know that you can just turn it and it'll fit nicely, but I find it's easy to just put the lid on without lining up those marks. You'll see me use these a lot in today's video. So besides the fact that I like that the lid doesn't fall off, look how well these stack. So they stack wonderfully. I'll just put a little label on the side so I can easily find the colors that I want. The ink pad itself is a firm pad, what many people have referred to in the past as felt or linen pad, and it really does stamp quite nicely. I think it's best to see me do some stamping while I tell you a little bit more about the ink. I am creating my little ink swatches. I have a free ink download over on my website for all the popular inks, and now I have added this. And I'm just stamping an all to new image onto my ink swatches. The ink in these round ink pads is slightly different than the ink that Altenew has in their crisp dye ink pads, which are the oval ink pads they've had for some time now. I will use those inks later in this video also. Now this ink is considered to be higher viscosity than their other dye inks. That means this ink is a little bit thicker. It is still a dye ink, but what I found is that it's a little bit juicier I don't mean like um, it over stamps. It just seems to put more ink on the stamp, which ends up giving you a crisp result right away. All of my ink swatches today were stamped on the first try with only one stamping necessary. And you can see how crisp and solid and dark the results are. Just based on what I noticed when I was using this ink, it seems like the ink in these ink pads is similar to the ink that you find often in foam ink pads. However, this has a firm pad. And that I like because that kind of is the best of both worlds for me in that I get really nice crisp results and I get a lot of color put down with one stamped image and they're good for blending, which you'll see later in this video. Another thing I noticed about this ink is that so far I haven't had any staining of my stamps when I use these inks. They seem to clean off my stamps very easily with a quick wipe of a cloth. Now I do feel I should address that yes, there are a lot of ink lines out there, a lot of really good ones. I use a lot and enjoy a lot. However, I like to share the different inks with you so you can look at what features may matter to you most so you know what you might be most interested in investing in. I am really liking this ink so far. There aren't many colors out just yet. I'm hoping that they add more to the collection. I do believe they are. There are ink cubes available in these inks and reinkers are available also. Right now, these are the colors that come in this collection. These are unique colors, especially love that blue and green, that indigo blue is just gorgeous. I'll be using these today, but this is something that you could use in addition to whatever ink lines you may have, whether they be all to new or others. They're beautiful colors that are great for stamping and inking. Again, they're available in the round ink pads. You can buy individual ink pads or you can buy the entire bundle or bundles of the four colors that go together. So there's like a light, medium, dark, and extra dark. And that's one of the things I've always liked about Altenew inks is they're great for stamp layering because you don't have to kind of search for colors that work well together. They have these little families available together or of course separately. Again, there are ink cubes available and there are re-anchors available. 
Now, because I found these inks to stamp so well right on the first attempt, I do think this is a good ink for beginners. Now, there aren't a lot of colors here, right? But they'll be adding to the collection. I had given my new mother-in-law, her name's Peggy, a bunch of inks to use because she has started doing uh, card making. I have already bought this collection of round inks and I will be giving them to her for Christmas because I did find they were kind of foolproof. They worked really well. So definitely a good ink for beginners and a nice addition of colors to any ink collection. I know there's a lot of inks out there. If you're happy with what you have and the colors you have, definitely stick with it. The techniques that I share always work with a variety of inks and especially today's technique. You could definitely use whatever inks you have. I just wanted to give you a little rundown of this new type of ink because I know I'll be getting lots of questions. All right, let's create some cards. I have a tip that I find really helpful when inking up die cuts, and I thought I'd share it with you. I also have several examples and other ideas for stepping up your layered die cuts and making them look even better. For all of my cards, I'm using Altenew layering die sets because they have a feature on them that makes it very, very easy to layer takes a lot less time. Now the die set may look a little complicated and the layering instructions may look a little complicated, but you will see that they add a feature to their dies that makes it much easier to do. This particular die set here is a new one. I love it. It creates two different full flowers and it has three leaf dies that go with it. So the top two rows there create one flower, the bottom two on the guide create another flower. I will show you what both look like. Now take a close look at the die and the die cut it creates. On the left, I have the die. On the right is the die cut it makes. Notice there's a number that the die embosses onto your die cut. This allows you to figure out what order to layer in. It also cuts a little keyhole so that you can figure out what orientation to line up your die cuts. Now both the number and the keyhole will get covered once you've assembled everything, so it's not something that will show, but it makes it so much faster to put your die cuts together. Now in this particular die set, I mentioned there are two flowers that it forms. What's neat is some of the dies have a bigger keyhole, some have a smaller keyhole, so you can know which dies layer together. It really is helpful and it makes for better results in the end and it takes less time. You could absolutely cut all of these flower pieces from different colors of cardstock, but sometimes it's hard to know what colors to use and to find light, medium, and dark shades of the same color. So what I like to do is cut them all from white cardstock and just have a bunch of white die cuts. I'll pile them up together with the die so I know what order to ink them and line them up in. So off screen, I've done a bunch of white die cutting. Now it's time to add color to these die cuts. I'll start with the leaves first. There are three leaf dies in this set and we'll ink those up. Now the tip that I have that's very helpful when inking up die cuts is to use a sticky mat. This one is from Brutus Monroe. There are other sticky mats out there. If you do not have a sticky mat, stay tuned. I'll share another idea with you. I use my leaf dies to cut from that green cardstock there. This will be my template that I keep with these dies and use again in the future. Into the openings of that template, I'm popping in white die cuts, the ones that we've cut just from regular white cardstock. Once I have them popped into place, I'll use my bone folder to really press them down so that these white die cuts are just tucked into the negative space, that green template. This will hold it in place as I do my inking. Now I'm using different Altenew blending brushes today and the new inks that I showed you earlier. You could use whatever inks you want to here. But what's really helpful here is I have that sticky mat and the negative space of these die cuts and that is holding those down so that when I ink over them, I'm not damaging the delicate parts of the die cut. Normally I would try to hold the die cut and ink each, you know, different parts of the leaves and it can be a hassle because the leaves wanna bend or whatever, because they're so delicate. But this holds it in place and allows me to ink it pretty quickly and get really good results. Now, if you do not have a sticky mat, another thing that you could do is create a template and on the back side of the template, put some tape 
over those openings so that when you flip the template over, the sticky part of the tape will be exposed in the openings and you can put your die cut into that opening and that tape will hold it there. Any kind of painter's tape or washi tape should work for that. You'll keep these templates and reuse them anytime you grab this die set so that you can easily ink up your die cuts. In the past, I would just take a die cut, stick it on a sticky mat and ink it. But really, you're just putting a lot of extra ink onto your sticky mat. And so this way, with the negative space, you're protecting your sticky mat from a lot of ink and you're really holding those die cuts in place. They won't budge at all and look at that beautiful result that you get. So again, you'll keep this template so that you can do this anytime you want to use this die set. Once I've inked up all of my leaves, I can remove the template from the sticky mat. The best way to do this is to curl your sticky mat back as I'm doing here and then pull the template off gently. It won't tear and you can save it for later. Off screen, I created a similar template, but this is for all the dies that layer for one of the flowers. Basically, I used all the dies with a large keyhole and you can follow the guide that uh, the die set comes with. To make it easier to figure out what inking I should do here, I have put the die cuts down in the numbers that the die makes. So up in the top left, that die cut has the one like embossed on it. Below that is two, three is below that, and then up on the top right is four, and it keeps going down. So this is helpful to me because I know up on the top left, I should have my darkest color, and on the bottom right, I should have my lightest. Generally, die cut layering, whatever's on the bottom is usually the darkest. Now you can spend more time really thinking about the dark spots of the flower, the light spots, but really, I've found that if you just do the darkest for the bottom layer and lightest for the top layer, it usually turns out just fine. So you'll see I'm using those beautiful indigo colors, the lightest on that last one on the bottom right, and the darkest color up here on that top left. So that one will be covered completely with the darkest color. You can see these inks go down easy. You could spend more time doing blending and getting the details, but I find this is a fast way to get great results. I'm taking all the die cuts out now that I'm done inking and I kind of put them in order up there. Now I'm placing the number one die cut down first onto a sticky mat. You could use the same one or a different one. And on top of that, I'm putting the number two die cut lining up that keyhole that both die cuts have. So there's no guessing on which way to um, orient each of these die cuts. You just line up that keyhole every time you put one down. I'm using a very strong liquid adhesive here that I trust. This is Gina K Connect. Any strong adhesive will work, and I'm really pressing them together each time. Now we're down to the last one here, so I'll glue that down. Then there's that tiny little piece, and you use that to glue to cover up the number on that last die cut right there. You can follow the guide to figure that out pop that one on and then all we have is the center of the flower to do and that will cover up that keyhole there so it really doesn't take long to put this together thanks to the numbers and that keyhole opening all right so now i'll continue to do another flower i've got everything out i might as well so this is the same template same die cuts and i'll continue to ink it up but this time i'm using different color inks I'm using the Altenew Crisp dye inks that I've been out for a long time. This is the set of four inks that has baby pink and magenta in it. And I'm just inking these up quickly. Now, this is a different type of ink, but it works great for this. So you could use whatever you have. This time, I started with the darkest ink and I'm kind of lightening as I go down. You could either do that way or start with the lightest ink and work your way up to the darkest. It really depends on how you like to ink, and I encourage you to try both ways. Generally, I like to start with the light ink and build up color to the darkest, but sometimes the other way around takes a little less effort and maybe a little less ink, so you really need to experiment on your own. But in the end, I'll get the same look and the same results. So I have all my die cuts here, and I can glue them together just by simply lining up those keyholes. So I'll continue to do this until this flower is assembled, just like our blue one. We also need to create the center die cuts for our flowers. So I added those to our leaf template. So I die cut them from the bottom of that template. I've got my white die cuts popped in place. Now you'll notice there are 
two that are shaped the same and the other two are shaped the same. But one of each has a keyhole in it. So you know which goes with which flower. One has a big keyhole, one has a smaller keyhole. It all makes sense when you have it there in your hands. Once these are inked up, we can add them to the center of the flowers. Here we have our pink flower. I'm putting a uh, liquid adhesive around that, lining up the keyhole with the keyhole on our flower. Then the last one just gets glued on top, but there's no guessing on the orientation because it's the same size and shape as the one underneath it. So that just basically covers up that hole and look at this beautiful flower. You can add more adhesive if you want to make sure it's secure. I had showed you earlier that this die set creates two layered flowers. I use the other dies to create a template that you see here to ink up the other die cuts. This will form a flower of the same style, but a different uh, shape. So you can have two different flowers on your card together. Now I'm not gonna show the whole process because it's the same thing. You ink it up the same way, line up those keyholes and check out the two flowers that you end up with. I love the look of these. Because these flowers have so much to them, I wanna keep the background simple. So I'm just using white cardstock and an embossing folder to add some texture, but not be too distracting. I'm putting a piece of white cardstock into this Alta New Daisy Tiles folder. It's a great one because it has a pattern to it. So it's not too distracting from the rest of the card. I'll run that through my die cut machine. These embossing folders should work with whatever die cut machine you have. You just wanna follow the instructions that come with your machine. And check out this beautiful, subtle texture that you get. It's hard to pick it up in photos in the video, but in real life, it's just gorgeous. I'm putting liquid adhesive on the back of that piece and adding it to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I have a tip on how to assemble your cards and get the flowers and leaves just how you want them. I put a good amount of liquid adhesive on the back center only of the flowers. That gives me some wiggle room. I can move it around until I'm happy with the placement. In fact, I got my die cut sentiment out. This is from the Alta New Versatile Greetings die set, a new absolute favorite of mine. It has the words and the shadow dies. You can see I've already pre-assembled a bunch of them over on the left, so I have them ready to go. And they have hot foil plates that work with it too, so you could hot foil and die cut it. Well anyway, I, I did the thanks from white and black cardstock, and I have that ready. I'm wiggling everything around until I'm happy with the placement. Now for the leaves, I'm just putting glue on the back of them and tucking them under our flowers. Because remember, I only put adhesive on the back center of the flowers. So these will easily slide underneath. Once I have everything in the position that I like, I can always use the fine tip of my glue to kind of wiggle my way underneath the die cuts, squeeze out a little more glue and make sure everything stays put. Here I'm putting adhesive on the back of our layered thanks and placing that right on top of all our flowers. I do recommend putting something heavy on this while this dries since we used all liquid adhesive. It doesn't take very long, but it really does help quite a bit. We can also embellish this. I'm using Alta New enamel dots. They have lots of color packets like you see here with the different shape and sizes of enamel dots, different shades together in one packet. So I thought using some of these gold ones here and there would be a great way to accent this. The nice thing about enamel dots is they aren't bulky. So they don't add a whole lot of dimension when you put it in the mail. I also used a brown marker just to add some little dots to the center for just some added detail. And then I picked up some foam squares and tucked them under some of the petals. These are small foam squares. I pierce them with the end of my craft knife, lift up a petal and tuck it underneath. So I just did this on some of the petals. It just adds a little bit of dimension and makes the flower look even more realistic. Then finally, I did a couple things to add some sparkle. You could totally skip these, but I love the results in the end. I used a Stardust glitter pen to draw lines into the embossed lines on our flowers. These dies create those little lines that are embossed, like impressed into our flowers. I just followed those lines with my glitter pen. I just feel like this adds a little bit of sparkle and interest, but you could totally skip it if you want. Or you could use a darker color, like a darker indigo pen to fill in those lines, or even a white gel pen. 
Then finally, I used Ranger Glossy Accents to put a coat of clear shine over our thanks word, just to make it stand out a little bit more. Because this card has some leaves sticking off the side, I will put it in a larger envelope. So this is a five by seven envelope. If you want to, you could just trim off those leaves so they don't hang off the edge and use a regular A2 envelope. But I love having those pieces sticking off. I think it looks nice when it's on display. I don't know about you, but I love that indigo color and that green goes nicely with it. I really am thankful that these dies have those guides to make it easier to figure out how to layer them. I'm hoping that we see more of that in layering dies in the future. We still have our pink flower, so I created another card. This time I use pink cardstock on the background and the Altenu Shattered Cubes Embossing Folder. Look at that cool pattern to it. Now I just added the flowers, the leaves, and I finished it off in the same way with the shimmer pen, glossy accents on that Hello die cut, and a few enamel dots. Okay, my next example shows a different flower, and this time I'm mixing two different colors together just to create some more variation on the petals. This is the Altenew Open Peony die set. It has the same system as the other one with the little holes to line up and the numbering. There are also leaf dies included. I cut a bunch of all of these die cuts from white cardstock and I have those ready to go so I can make multiple flowers. Now this time I'm starting out with the magenta colors and I'm putting those onto the die cuts but notice I'm leaving the tips or the edges or ends of the die cuts a little bit lighter. The reason I'm doing that is I want to add a little yellow here and there. So first I put down the pinks. You can see it's heavier up there on the top left and lighter on the other side with those top layering images. Then I'm bringing in my warm sunshine. It's a beautiful yellow and a small blending brush and adding that yellow to the tips of these die cuts. By using a smaller brush, I'm able to get into smaller areas or apply less amount of ink at once. Notice I'm really not taking much effort to blend. This is a very forgiving technique. And when you assemble all the petals together, it'll look great, even if your blending isn't wonderful. Don't worry about it. So there you can see I have the darker colors over on the left, lighter colors over there on the right, and now we can assemble it. I'm once again just lining up those key holes that each of the die cuts has, very quick to do. Now I did get to the center here and realize I forgot to do the center die cut. And I just decided to quickly ink that up with a marker. I put some yellow down with a the marker. Then I'll add a little bit of that brown uh, inking just to make it a little bit darker. Those browns really are a nice brown. Now I can glue that into the center. Again, I'm just following the numbers on each die cut and the keyhole. Now we've got this last one that lines up. We also have these little outline ones that just go on the edge of your die cuts. These don't have keyholes or numbers because they're the top layers, but they easily line up with the die cuts that are already glued together. And the guide that comes with the die set uh, gives you a really good idea of how to place them. So once everything glued down, I love this result of the pinks and yellows mixed together and how it just creates uh, more variation and more interest in this flower. I enjoy assembling die cuts like this. I've mentioned that in videos before. If you do not enjoy assembling a lot of die cuts, there are a lot of layering flower die sets out there with less layers, or you could definitely skip some of the detail ones and still have a beautiful result. All right, so I assembled the card similar to how I did before. This time I used the Altenu Intricate Tiles 3D embossing folder for the white on the background. I love this folder. I'll use it again on my next card and I'll use it in the future in videos. I just glued my flower and leaves. Those leaves are from the same open peony die set. To the center of the flower, added the thanks die cut. We did the glossy accents, the um, glitter pen, and the enamel dots also, like our first two cards. So I really like how you can mix colors easily by inking your die cuts. Get that fun variation of color and add a lot of interest to your card. I have one more card for you. This time I'm using another floral layering die set. 
that also has the keyhole and numbering system. This is the Altenew Tulip Full Blooms die set. You can see there are lots of die cut shapes here to create two tulips. You have the open one and the closed one. There are different petals and stems, many ways you can arrange these. But because of the keyhole system and the numbering system and the guide you get, it's pretty easy to figure out how to line them up. Now I did the same inking system that I did on my first examples where I created the template, added inking to it, and then start assembling, lining up the keyholes. This time I used a coral berry and heartbeat color from Altenew Crisp Dye Inks and that same yellow warm sunshine. I wanted to also mention that if you like the look of layering die cuts but don't want to take the time to ink them like I've done today, or to dig through your stash to find the right colors of cardstock. One of the fastest way to ink up die cuts is to use sprays. I've done a video showing how fast it can be. You can even add shimmer. I'll link to that video up here on the top right if you want to check that out. Now look at how easy it is to figure out how to layer up these die cuts. There's two keyholes on this one, no guessing required. You just line up the die cuts. Now this one gets tucked behind that other petal. Easy to figure out because I got the guide over there and watch this, you got the last two petals that simply line up with the ones below it to cover up those holes and also adds more dimension. Love this so much. Okay, so now we have our little flowers formed. I also inked up the stems and leaves using the same green, green inks I used before. I again used the same embossing folder from the last card and then the hello friend. Keep in mind that this hack that I shared with you of creating a template for your die cuts so that you can easily ink blend on them. This works not just on layering dies or on flowers like I use today, but you could do it on any of your die cuts that you want to add a little color to. It's a time saver and it gives better results. If you're interested in these products, I always have links to a couple different sources in my description below. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other layering die cut videos that I think you might enjoy. Thanks for visiting. I'll see you again soon and have a great week.